one very common and useful way of representing the rate of decay of radioactive atoms is by using a concept known as the half-life. Now, the half-life of any radioactive atom is basically the amount of time that it takes exactly half of the initial amount of that unstable atom that we begin with to undergo radioactive decay. Now, to see exactly what we mean by that statement and to visualize what the half-life is, let's consider the following example. Let's suppose we begin initially at a time of zero with a sample of 20 unstable parent nuclei shown in purple. So these atoms are the unstable atoms and they have not yet undergone radioactive decay. Now let's suppose the half-life is given by 1,000 years. So that basically means if we wait 1,000 years from an initial time of zero, exactly half of this sample of 20 atoms will undergo radioactive decay. So after one half-life or 1,000 years, we'll have 10 atoms left over that have not yet undergone radioactive decay. And the other 10 atoms shown in orange are our atoms that have undergone radioactive decay and became the more stable daughter nuclei. Now if we begin with this sample and we wait 1,000 more years, so basically if we wait one more half-life, exactly half of this sample will undergo radioactive decay and exactly half of 10 or 5 will be left over at the end that have not yet undergone radioactive decay. So basically if we begin with our initial sample of 20 unstable nuclei and we wait two half-lives or 2,000 years we'll have a sample of 5 left over shown in purple that have not yet undergone radioactive decay and 15 have undergone radioactive decay and have transformed into the more stable daughter nuclei shown in orange. So this is what we mean by a half-life. So the, <clears throat> the units of half-life is usually seconds, hours, days, years, so the units is time. Now how exactly do we calculate the half-life mathematically? So mathematically there exists a relationship between the half-life and the radioactive decay constant. So remember the decay constant which is usually given by the symbol alpha or lambda is basically or basically represents the radioactivity of our unstable atom. So the greater the decay constant is, the more radioactive our atom is and the more likely it is to undergo our radioactive decay. And so that means half-life varies inversely with the decay constant alpha. And this makes sense because as the radioactivity of our atom increases, the alpha increases and the amount of time it should take for our atom to decay decreases as we'll see in just a moment. Now, to derive this equation for the half-life, for the relationship between the half-life and the decay constant alpha, let us begin with the radioactive decay law. So basically N represents our sample number at some time t. So N is equal to N naught multiplied by e to the negative alpha times t, where alpha is basically our decay constant and N naught is our initial sample at a time of zero. So in this case, our initial sample at a time of zero, our n naught, was equal to 10. Now how exactly can we calculate the half-life using this equation? So basically the half-life, which is basically our t, is the amount of time it takes for our initial sample to basically undergo decay and transform exactly half of that initial sample into the more stable daughter nuclei. So to determine the half-life, we must solve for t when n is exactly half of its initial amount. And if our 
initial amount is n naught, then exactly half of that is n naught divided by 2. So we're looking for t when n is equal to n naught divided by 2. So let's set n naught divided by 2 equal to n naught times e to the negative alpha times t. So we have n naught appear here and here. We can cancel those out and we have 1 half is equal to e to the negative alpha times t. Now because e to the negative alpha times t is the same thing as saying 1 divided by e to the alpha times t, we can basically rearrange this equation and we get the following result. So t, uh, 2 is equal to e to the positive alpha times t. Now if we take this and we take the natural log of both sides, this e will cancel out and we are left with natural log of 2 is equal to alpha times t. Now we can solve for our t and in this case the t represents the half-life and we designate this with the one-half symbol. So t one half is basically the half life and it is equal to the natural log of 2, a constant, divided by alpha, our decay constant. So this is exactly the relationship between the half life and the decay constant. And as mentioned here, we see that the relationship is an inverse relationship. As alpha increases, the half life basically decreases. So to see exactly what we mean by these two equations, let's look at the following example. So, a given unstable radioactive isotope has a decay constant of alpha equals to 0.1 years to the negative 1. Find the half-life of this isotope and if we begin with an initial sample of 100 grams at a time of 0, find how much is left over after 25 years. So basically, in step 1, we use this equation to calculate what the half-life is. So natural log of 2 divided by 0.1 gives us about 6.93 years. So basically if we begin with a sample of 100 grams and we wait 6.93 years, we'll have 50 grams left over. Now, how exactly do we calculate how much grams is left over after 25 years? Well, we apply this equation, the radioactive decay law. So we want to solve for n, knowing what n naught is, it's simply 100 grams, and knowing what our t is, because we are told that t is 25 years. Now we also know what our alpha is, it's 0.1. So we we plug in our values and we see that after, after 25 years, if we begin with 100 grams, we'll have only 8.21 grams left over. So, once again, the half-life of any radioactive atom is basically the amount of time that is required to pass for exactly half of the initial amount to undergo radioactive decay. And the half-life depends on the decay constant and it's given by this equation. So if we know what our decay constant alpha is for any particular unstable atom, we can Readily, readily solve for our half-life. And then we can use this equation to basically determine various things.